Today you will discover an interesting graph that I wish everyone knew about because I seriously believe that just being aware of this could prevent millions of people from getting into trouble and also significantly increase their quality of life. Check this out. Those of you who have come across some content by the addiction expert Anna Lemke have probably heard her say pain and pleasure are co-located in the brain. So what does this mean? Well, what it means is that pain and pleasure are like two sides of the same coin. Let's put pleasure up here on the y-axis and pain further down right here. Okay, so what it means is that if you push your baseline anyway, it will rebound and cause an opposite reaction later on. And then it can start looking somewhat like this graph right here. This is also known as Richard Solomon's opponent process theory of emotions. Okay, so whenever you go for some instant gratification stuff that takes no effort and feels very pleasurable, like for example drinking alcohol or eating two donuts and having a milkshake in the middle of the day. Well, in the moment you get quite a lot of pleasure, but after you're done, your dopamine levels will actually not just come back down, but they drop down below your baseline level here for some time. And when you're down here, you actually feel a bit of pain. Yes, this pain can be in the form of you feeling something like this is not a good place to be. I need another donut or I need another beer or that you need something to take you out of that slump even if you do not consciously think that you are in a slump. In other words, you can feel cravings, a lack of drive and even some physical pain can occur. Now the length of the slump here depends on how high and for how long you were spiking that dopamine during the A process. It depends on the stimuli, how often you do it and on other things as well. But the takeaway message here is that if you find yourself in such a slump, then you should just wait it out and not go for more instant gratification stuff, either of the same sort or any other form. Because that is really how you can get yourself into some serious trouble. But just as long as you're not addicted to the stimuli, if you just wait, it will go back to baseline here. And we're talking within just a few hours or a day, depending on the stimuli. In fact, it will go back to baseline even if you are addicted, but then you'll have to wait a whole lot longer. Then it can be a matter of several weeks and not just hours. The second takeaway message here is then going to be the absolute worst time you could go for some instant gratification stuff, like for example adult sites or a big meal of junk food, is right before you need to get some serious work done. <laughs> because then you'll be down in that slump right when you're supposed to do the hard stuff. And then you're really going to struggle with your motivation to get it done, because we all know that low dopamine levels means a lot less drier. And this is just one reason why I'm careful with my recreational YouTube surfing and potential sugar retreats and just try to save those until after I'm done with my online work for the day. And here's something even more important to know. If you don't wait when you're feeling low here and you keep going back for more before you reach baseline, then this is what the graph is going to start to look like over time. As you clearly see, now you get less pleasure in the moment and even more pain after you're done. Oh man, and the worst of all, after the slump is over, you no longer reach up to your former baseline here. This is what an addiction looks like in the form of a graph. And once more, the danger lies in instant gratification stuff like junk food, alcohol, adult sites, social media, gambling, drugs, etc. Those can really get you into trouble, especially if you can't cope with wading out the slump right here. This is important. We also need to state that there's nothing wrong with indulging in some yummy food and having a few drinks every now and then because <laughs> that's just part of the human experience. But then just be aware of the coming slump here then so that you don't try to escape it by going for more low value dopamine stuff at that very low moment. It is like the saying goes, if you find yourself in a hole, it's best to stop 
digging. In fact, Anna Lemke often says, if you chase pleasure for the sake of pleasure itself, you risk ending up with anhedonia. And for those of you who didn't know, anhedonia means a horrible state, meaning you now have an inability to feel pleasure. And the professor of neurobiology, Andrew Huberman, used to say, spiking dopamine to high levels without effort will destroy a person in the long run. And by the way, with the words without effort, then he obviously meant instant gratification things, like for example, binging on junk food, alcohol, or adult sites. They give you instant pleasure without you having to put in any effort. I mean, if you think about it, all throughout history, if a man wanted to be an attractive mate and have attractive girls around him, what did he have to do? Well, that's right, he had to be in good shape, build status, or at least gather some form of resources related to survival. And all those things were hard. They took a lot of hard work and effort. But if he succeeded, he would have some mating opportunities. And the higher in status, the more effort behind, the more opportunity as a reward. But nowadays, any man can go on adult sites and in literally three seconds, he can reward himself like crazy with watching the hardest women on earth get it on on the screen without any effort at all. He can choose whatever categories he wants and they'll do whatever he wants. And not just one woman either, but literally thousands of them, hundreds, thousands times more than his caveman ancestors ever could see in nature. <laughs> so no wonder that so many people get a numb pleasure response in today's world. But here's the most interesting part. Remember when I said that pain and pleasure are co-located in the brain? Well, that means you can actually take this graph and flip it around. So you put the painful stuff up here and the pleasure down here. Here. Well, my friends, this means that if you, for example, go for a 30 minute run here, well, it's going to be painful in the moment, but you'll actually get a real neurobiological reward after you're done with feelings of pleasure in a healthy way. And the same goes for, for example, taking a cold shower or doing anything that takes a lot of effort then you will always get a healthy natural reward after you're done that does not lead to any addictions or anhedonia. In fact, here too, the B process only gets stronger and stronger with time, just like with the drugs. But this time it's positive. As you can see, if you keep doing this over time, now the painful stuff feels less painful in the moment and the rewarding feelings you get after you're done will start getting stronger and will start lasting longer. So the moral of the story is to limit the situations where you reward yourself for absolutely nothing. Instead, if you want to feel really good long term, go for those natural rewards that always follow effort. In fact, today I'm going to print out this graph for myself and put it on my refrigerator as a constant reminder that even from a neurological standpoint, happiness is literally to be found after effort as opposed to instant pleasures. And oh hey guys, if you already have dug yourself into a really deep hole when it comes to adult sites and you find yourself addicted to them, then take a look at this video right here. As over there I talk about something that could be the absolute easiest and best way to get out of that hell hole.